Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at The Fox in the Forest Duet from Renegade Games. Quick disclaimer that I did receive a review copy of this game. The Fox in the Forest duet takes the originally competitive Fox in the Forest game and changes it into a purely cooperative game for exactly two players. This is a trick-taking game with trump suits and all that good stuff. And the basic idea is you're working with your partner to move a pawn back and forth between you to pick up gems in the forest. I personally love competitive and partner trick-taking games like Spades and Bridge. Does the Fox in the Forest duet live up to that with a purely cooperative model? Let's find out and get to the list. Our number five is a mix, and that's how the game changes up the difficulty and gives you options for varying your gameplay experience. On the positive side, the game gives you three different difficulty levels, and you can really ramp it up to an almost impossible state. And for a pretty simple trick-taking game like this, I appreciate the option. But on the negative side, all the different difficulty levels do is increase the number of gems you have to collect and decrease the number of times you can mess up. So it's not really adding variety to the game, it's just making it a more kind of grueling experience to push through. We have another mix at number four, and that's the three round structure of the game. On the positive side, playing through two or three rounds, because it's impossible to win in only one, strikes the right balance between not just doing one one hand of cards, because that could be too random and what comes out, but also not doing something like spades or hearts where you play hand after hand and the game can overstay its welcome. But on the negative side, the give and take of the three rounds can feel a little bit frustrating because basically you're moving around collecting these gems on the board, but at the end of each round, they add a bunch of gems back. So you might feel like you haven't really accomplished anything and it can be a little demoralizing, especially at the harder difficulty levels. But we're on to a full on pro at number three and that's the special powers that appear on some of the cards in the game. And I really appreciate these special abilities, not just because they liven up the basics of trick taking, but also because they create communication paths ways for the two players. Like in most trick-taking games, you can't talk to each other at all about what's in your hand or what you want to play, but I can put down a special card that lets me trade a card with you and I can give you something that'll give you a hint as to what I want you to follow with. It's not too complicated because there's only five special powers in the entire game, but it gives just enough variety to what you can do that it feels like a big increase in the strategy of the game. But we're back to a mix with number two, and that's the trick taking and card playing itself. On the negative side, trick taking with only two players can feel a little stale and simple, especially if you're used to games that have four players in them like Bridge. However, that being said, you still have all the cool things of trick taking, especially cooperative trick taking, in that I can run out a suit on purpose to let you trump more easily, or I can try to give you clues based on the cards I'm playing and not playing. All that fun goodness is still here, just on a limited basis compared to more complicated trick taking games. We get a final full-on pro with number one, the element that takes the trick-taking in the game to another level, and that's the movement icons that control how your pawn goes around the board. The basic idea here is that for the two cards that were played by the leader and the follower, you add up the movement icons on each card, and whichever player won the trick moves the pawn towards them that many spaces. Whichever space they land on, they take a gem from there, and again, getting all the gems is how you win, but if you go too far and go off the board, you get a penalty. And this core mechanic really makes the trick-taking and strategy and cooperation in the game feel super special. You have to carefully play out your hand and judge what your opponent has so that you don't win too much or they don't win too much, and you can see what all the possible movement values are based on the cards that could be in play, so you can guess where you might go and which card you should lead with to get to the exact spot. It just really ratchets up the cooperation and tension of the game in a wonderful way, it really makes this a great trick-taking game overall. So if you can't tell from that final point, the Fox in the Forest duet is lovely, and I fully recommend for any two players who like trick-taking games. The addition of the special powers and the movement icons to the basic idea of trick-taking, which already includes some fun limited communication between partners, is a great marriage that really makes this simple, cheap, easily affordable game something really special. But if you don't like trick-taking games, or if you want more complicated ones with more players, or if you want to see more variety in your games and not basically play the same thing each time, because that's what's going to happen here, then this might not be the game for you. 
But for me, at least for the foreseeable future, this is a definite keeper and one I really look forward to playing with my wife over and over again. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.